Mr. Chairman, I'm Dave Domina, D-O-M-I-N-A. I'm a lawyer. I represent the State Law Enforcement Bargaining Council. Its president, Brian Peterson, is passing out some materials. I guess we appear in opposition to this bill, but neutral might be more accurate. Um, what we want to do is give you a little bit of information about what happened, a little bit of information about where we are, perhaps some cautions about uh, why it might be a little bit more complicated to fix than first appeared to be the case, and to reassure you that we have no hesitation about oversight by the treasurer. Uh, there is a concern about whether titling the money to the treasurer is what is really ultimately best for the state or for the state troopers, the conservation officers, and the game wardens or not because of, of a federal legal issue that I'll highlight very briefly and quickly. The materials being handed out to you, first of all, are a, a relatively lengthy response written um, ultimately by me for the State Law Enforcement Bargaining Council in response to the preliminary draft of the auditor's report. You'll see as you read that document that much of what was in the auditor's report was not disputed at all. And what was disagreed was disagreed about on technical legal grounds, not political or philosophical grounds, really. Uh, you'll also note as you go through that material, and this is very important to the law enforcement officers of the state, uh, you'll note that the reason that the auditor conducted the audit is that the current officers and directors of Slebic requested it. In June of 2009, when the current officers took over, they discerned serious problems with the health and dental insurance plan that covers the state's officials with powers of arrest. That's who Slebic is. Um, a moment of history, Slebic was created by a predecessor legislature to allow the state's law enforcement officers with powers of arrest 84% are state patrolmen, the rest are about equally conservation officers and state fire marshals, each of whom have limited powers of arrest in, in limited areas of law enforcement, to combine together for collective bargaining purposes. They're one of 13 collective bargaining units under a statute that you enacted. Uh, Slebic has functioned for that purpose. Along the way in the negotiations, which I've had nothing to do with, so I report on the history here for their plans from, for their employment agreements from time to time, they negotiated for and got the right to separate out from the state employees' health and dental insurance program to create their own risk pool and to manage that risk pool with a funding criteria that provides that 79% of the premium is from the state, 21% is from direct payroll deductions from the officers, with the caveat that if there is an increase in demand for money in the pool resulting in an increase in premium, that increase is maxed out for the state, so if the costs go too high, there's an additional burden to the law enforcement officers and the state is exempt from it. So there's an incentive to manage it well. When the new group of people took over in the summer of, 19, of 2009, uh, they discerned serious problems with the administration of the plan. It wouldn't be appropriate for me to detail those now. They are the subject of a lawsuit. I'll tell you that the litigation was withheld from filing so the auditor could conduct his work without the auspices of litigation hanging over it, hoping that would free up some communications for him, and frankly, we hope that helped. Uh, I can tell you that since 2009, the people who are operating the State Law Enforcement Bargaining Council now, all of whom are full-time law enforcement officers, contributing part-time to operate the organization, have replaced their general counsel, and that's not now with me. I'm just involved in this for a limited purpose. Their accountant, their auditor, that's an outside third-party auditor, their insurance agent of record for their stop-loss insurance, their labor negotiator, 
their insurance consultant who was primarily responsible as liaison between them and their third party administrator. Their third party administrator has also been replaced and they've replaced their office manager. The only continuity in the organization are the directors and officers who are in office, a few of whom had terms overlapping before 2009. There's no reason for me today to expend energy talking about errors or omissions or oversights or neglect or mistakes uh, or misplaced confidence by predecessor boards. Uh, that would not serve a useful purpose because we have a problem now. We're trying to fix it. The current uh, group of people operating Slebic um, thinks that it speaks for all of Slebic's members to say that oversight is welcome. Here is the problem with eventually just moving the money back to the state as we see it. And I think that Senator Schumacher's let's wait and see what we need to do bill is a good idea. We've only had a chance so far with the treasurer for a few telephone conversations to agree in principle. We haven't even had a chance to meet face to face yet, but we certainly will. If the health insurance plan turns out to be what is called a government plan, as opposed to an ERISA plan for federal legal purposes, having the state treasurer hold the money poses no problem. If the plan turns out to be an ERISA plan, a federal statute and a whole series of pretty complicated federal regulations would make the state treasurer a fiduciary with some responsibilities for the money under federal law that might not be supplied with 12th Amendment immunity and might not be within the State Tort Claims Act's limitations. We want to work that out to be sure that that issue is decided. I'll tell you that the United States Department of Labor has a submission procedure that everybody involved in this agrees should have been used years ago to submit the question, what kind of plan is this, and get a federal ruling. So we'll know the answer to that and we'll have a reliable answer and then know how to fix it. Between then and now, the money that is in the plan and is used to fund it is at U.S. Bank. It is entrusted money. There was a huge expenditure of money to buy a building, much in the news recently. The building is for sale. There appears to be a loss. It appears as though, and I underscore appears as though, the discussion, the decision at the time the building was built may have been that the plan was perceived as overfunded and that buying a capital asset like a building would solve an overfunding problem while not depriving the fund of an asset. Well, unfortunately, this kind of money has to be income generating. The building did not have a revenue generating business plan associated with it at all, and it was not a good idea. Um, the people in place recognize that. We're doing our best to get it fixed. There is, I want to be sure that while I appear in the opposition spot, you recognize there's a spirit of complete cooperation about this. Uh, law enforcement wants to have a good discussion with the treasurer. It wants to be sure the right decision is made. It wants the benefit, if there is one, of a, a younger, uh, generally less risky uh, insurance pool that might be a premium advantage and recognizes that that might have to be sacrificed to fi fix this problem. Thank you. Thank you. Um, now, just let's clarify. You think that what Senator Shoemaker suggested that the committee hold this bill is a good idea. Yes, I think so. I think that that will allow us to figure out with the state treasurer whether the bill is needed, mm -hmm. whether we have a disagreement, and if the bill is needed exactly what it should say. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Dobbin. Any questions from the committee? Thank, Thank you, you for appearing here.